Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now after uploading yesterday's A8 6600K video, I started working on my initial comparison that I said I was going to make with this CPU. However, that sort of got thrown off track a little bit when I got a few messages asking me how this would compare to Intel's 6600K. And for a minute I sort of forgot what uh, people were talking about. I was like, hang on, the 6600K is a AMD chip, but of course Intel had the i5 6600K and immediately I started to think, well, I don't think there's going to be much of a competition taking place here. In theory, Intel's chip should perform a lot better, but I couldn't resist and I thought, why not compare the two in today's one, AMD 6600K, which launched in 2013, and Intel's 6600K i5, which launched in 2015, for totally different prices. These should not be compared in any way, but for the sake of viewer requests, well, I thought we'd see which 6600K is more deserving of its namesake in what is the most unrealistic and probably most odd comparison in the CPU world, but there we go, battle of the 6600Ks. Let's get into it. I've paired both with my 1080 Ti and 16 gigs of RAM. Of course, the 6600K takes DDR4. I should probably specify the i5 takes DDR4. So I've got 16 gigs of 2666 megahertz RAM there and the A8 takes DDR3. So we're using 16 gigs of 1333 megahertz. Immediately there are, of course, platform advantages for the i5, but it is all around the better performer, I would imagine. Nonetheless, let's see if the A8 holds up because on the used market here in the UK, the i5 costs about four times more, but does it offer four times the performance? We'll have to see. Okay, so it was obvious which way this test was going to go after firing up Cinebench R20 and discovering the differences between the two chips here in the multi-core test. Now, of course, as I said at the start, this was pretty obvious. This was just due to fan request this video, but I think the A8 6600 still puts up a decent fight. Moving on to the gaming and in CSGO, it was still averaging around 100 FPS with the 1080 Ti. Now, I'm showing you the on-screen gameplay from the A8 today, but I'll be putting up the comparative results on screen. As you can see, the i5 6600K did much better. Both of these chips were also at stock speed, so they both have a little more to give, though. In terms of the comparison, I think the winner is clear. As we move on to Crisis Remastered, again, the A8 does a pretty respectable job. I think we're seeing about 45 frames per second on average. The 1% load does struggle a little bit, but the i5 pulls ahead with about 75 frames per second on average. This game suffers from poor CPU utilization, um, so both of these chips, I feel, aren't really being utilized to their full potential, but both are doing okay, I think, in terms of the frame rates here. And the 1% low on the i5 is far better than that on the A8. In GTA 5, we were seeing 47 or 48, let's call it 48, it was 47.6, so we'll round that up to 48 here. The frame rate will vary depending on where you are, but during our little trip to downtown Los Santos here, 48 was the average with a 1% low of 29, so it did drop below 30 on occasion, though the experience was okay. Of course, in real life, you probably won't be pairing it with a 1080 Ti. This is just to get the maximum out of this chip, both of these chips, in fact. The i5 hit 91 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 65. So again, there were a few less stutters to say the least in this scenario. We'll finalize then with Red Dead Redemption 2 at the high settings. Again, the 6600K from AMD was able to maintain at least 30 frames per second um, with a 1% low of 27, whereas the i5 pulled ahead with 70 frames per second. So the gameplay experience is going to be far more enjoyable with that chip. But there we go. If you ever wondered which 6600K comes out on top, I'm sure none of you ever did, then now you know. And should any of you ever ask for a used 6600K for Christmas from your parents, be sure to specify the Intel 
model. Otherwise, you may come away a little disappointed. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll join you for a more realistic video, I guess, next time. Or more sensible. Let's say sensible.